All right, so we have Dan the Man Trout versus Straight Out of Compton. All right, so we have Thrasher going against uh, the store pick, basically what it's called from uh, from John Gresham. Can you feel it? Can you feel the excitement right now? Robot Scott versus ADHD Whiskey. Let's go. Defending champion taking on Richie Z. Richie Z against Rebecca Page. Holy shit. Now this is a final matchup for the night, guys. Let's do this shit. What's up, everybody? Get pumped. Get pumped. It's round two of Blend Get In here on Whiskey Wednesday night. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming in for another kick-ass show. We got a lot of blends tonight, a lot of blends, but I'm going to be, um, you know, kind of spacing it out, kind of finishing out the, uh, the second round as we get prepared for the finals next week. So, going to be freaking kick-ass, guys. I can't wait for you to, uh, to watch tonight and... Um, also celebrating 25,000 subs, which um, I don't like to do too, ma too many celebration streams or whatever because, you know, uh, you know it's, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, I, I love obviously the, uh, the, the subscribership and, and the people that watch and all the great comments and everything. Uh, but 25, I thought, is a special one. You know, it's a quarter of a way. It's a quarter of a way to, uh, you know, who knows, maybe 100,000. You never know where it could go. Uh, but I want to say thank you to all of you for helping support the channel and watching. Um, this was um, to wake up this morning and see I hit 25K was a very, very welcome surprise. So uh, today um, I'm celebrating with uh, my latest bottle I reviewed, my old Carter Batch 5 that I love so much, as you guys saw in the review. If you didn't, go check it out because I can't say enough about this uh, whiskey. I love it so much. Um, whoo, we got, uh, let me say hi to you guys in the chat first. Um, let's see here. We have, uh, Jason Busey was here. What's up, Jason? Nice to see you as always. BDC, uh, Whiskey Central. Shayla's in the house. What's up, Shayla? If any of you guys have not subscribed to Whiskey Central and Shayla, please open up another window and go do so now, uh, while I'm live because... She's awesome and making some great content. Uh, Will Henderson is here. Anthony Motley is here. Trev Wilson, of course. The Wrench. What's up, buddy? Danny Lynn is here. Uh, we have Karen Ford. Nice to see you as always. Uh, Mike Baker, Will Henderson, Alec Garinger, Jason Coates. He's drinking Malort, apparently. Uh, <laughs> we got DC is here. One Lost Cause. Uh, let's see. Hendo, Will Henderson, Adam Dorman's here. What's up, buddy? Uh, Mike Franklin's here. We also have David Hatton. What's up, buddy? Uh, let's see. DT is in the house. Uh, the Bourbon Buddies in the house. ADHD Whiskey. Again, go check out his amazing channel. Um, Anthony Motley's here. Anthony Orlando. Wesley Zeller. The Buddies. Bourbon Buddies are here. Definitely give them a subscribe too, guys. Doug Petty. Mike Cullerton. So many cool. Uh, Austin Scott's in the house. What's up, Austin? Nice to see you as always. Uh, Nick the Greek, uh, Keith Schmidt's in the house, Mike Cullerton, Jason stepping up again with the intro. Glad you like the intro, guys. I do work on those, so I'm glad you like them. I feel like it's a good intro to get pumped for the stream. Um, let's see. 
Hey, hey Scott from My Bourbon Journeys in the house. <laughs> ADHD whiskey says I celebrate every twenty five subscribers popping corks. Damn, I probably <laughs> you don't have any you have any whiskey left, buddy. Hey, David Schweibel is here. What's up, man? The first rule of old Carter is we don't talk about old Carter. Good point. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got Trev Wilson's dropping channel uh, links in the house and um, telling you guys to go subscribe. Of course, my bourbon journey too. None of you guys have subscribed to Scotty, then you're missing out on a, one great palette. So here's to 25K. Here's to you guys. Here's to the support. Here's to the next 25K. Cheers, guys. I'm gonna have some of this. Get the palette ready for round two. Uh, what we're gonna dive in? We're gonna dive in real quick to the news and then get started right away with Blend Again. Oh, God, that's good. It's still getting good and better. And Old Carter Batch 5 has the perfect mix of, like, butterscotch, butter pecan, hashtag butter pecan. This, like, chocolate slash, um, uh, what is it? It's, like, chocolate slash, like, coffee note going on, like, this spiced coffee. It's It's phenomenal. Just great stuff. Mm, love it. All right. Let me go to the chat here, guys. Fine Bourbon Journey. Congrats on 25K. Very well deserved. Thanks, man. Um, Kevin Campbell, looking forward to the drums. <laughs> Congrats, dude. Says ADHD. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, Dusty Dan's in the house. Joe Pastrana says he's working. Glad you're still hanging out with us, though. Richie Z's in the house. What's up, man? Uh, what else? Oh, if you guys haven't subscribed to uh, Trev Wilson, he's got a great pregame channel as well. So Trev Wilson, feel free to drop your link in the channel if you want to, you know, pregame and get more people to uh, join that. He's he pregames randomly for uh, different channels that are on that are going to be on their certain time slots. So it's a good time hanging out with Trev, just talking about stuff and whiskey and more stuff. Edward Fomar, I can't believe it's not butter pecan. <laughs> hey, Christopher David's here. Legit whiskey reviews is in the house. What's up? Legit whiskey reviews is. Um, I think you have a channel too. Might want to go check that out. Scary peepers in the house. All right, we got more people jumping in. I started a little early tonight, so um, I figured the more time the better. So I'm gonna drink more of this. Shit. ADHD whiskey. We need a grandma update. Okay, so grandma, she's still in the hospital, unfortunately. Um, grandma is, uh, so if any of you know, my grandma's 96. Uh, she went to the hospital uh, for, we found out she had a UTI, which dehydrated the hell out of her. And she was really struggling with um, staying hydrated. Now they got a bunch of fluids in her. She's doing better. They're keeping her. They're keeping her at the hospital to um, check her kidney levels and some other things, just as precautions. Overall, her health is pretty good. They're just they were just trying to get her, you know, rehydrated, get her those nutrients back in there for her. So thank you so much for asking. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, Grandma's my Nona is my, uh, you know, she's my that woman's got my heart. So cheers to cheers to all the Nonas. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, let's see. Yes, good luck to all the blenders today, the master blenders, Mr. Whiskey Shits in the house. What's up? Um, Brett Marquette, congrats on 25K. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, Brett. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into a little bit of news here. If you guys haven't heard yet so far, we have uh, – obviously, if you guys haven't heard – Buffalo Trace announced the lineup for BTAC and what the bottles and the ages and the proofs will be. So let's go through those real quick um, just to kind of get you guys, you know, psyched up. Uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection is, is probably the lineup from Buffalo Trace that I like to seek out the most. I do think it's the best bang for your buck. If you could find it at good prices, obviously the markup on them can sometimes be just ridiculous, like most stuff from Buffalo Trace. But if you have good relationships with store owners, good relationships with, um, uh, well, I mean, yeah, store owners and even 
anyone that, that, that has a chance to find one that can find one for you. Or if you have good luck in state lotteries, which I have none of, I've entered like 15, I think I've been in about 13 to 14 or 15 different Ohio state lotteries. Haven't won once. So I have no luck with, uh, with that stuff. I tend to get luckier on my own, uh, trying to search my stores in New York. But, uh, with that, Let's start with uh, George T. Stagg. Uh, so this year's George T. Stagg, um, as you guys know, it's always uncut, unfiltered. The 2020 release, the barrels were filled in 2005 and were picked uh, from warehouses LK and Q. Evaporation is 59%. So this is 15 years old and four months at 130.4 proof. Can we get a hallelujah? I am happy to report that... Stag, George T. Stag is back to those higher proofs where I really think it shines. So thank goodness. That 116 point, what was it, 116.9 batch last year, it was good. It's a solid batch. It's it's a great, you know, stag, but, you know, lucky to have one. But it just, you know, to see them going lower in proof, you know, it's like you lose a little bit of flavor. So I'm glad it's it's coming back up here. Uh, my favorite of the lineup, as always, is William LaRue Weller. Um, again, uncut, unfiltered. Uh, the 2020 release is 12 years and six months of aging. Uh, and this is 134.5 proof. So friggin' awesome, uh, awesome release for that one. Uh, next up, uh, William LaRue Weller is the one that I seek out the most. Um, William LaRue Weller, for me, is always... No matter what year I taste it, no matter what year I get, even if I try it in a bar somewhere, if it's older, it's always delicious. So William Lee Weller is the one I always try to hunt down as much as I can. Uh, I just missed some super chats. We got Brian Brennicky says, congrats on 25K. Well-deserved in just the beginning. Prayers for grandma. Thank you so much, Brian. I really appreciate that. Um, that means a lot, man. Thank you so much. Hope you're – I don't know if you're still in Vegas, Brian, but if you are, good luck. If you're back home – if you're back home, then, um, uh, you know, glad you got home safe. Uh, let's see here. Jason Busey, congrats. Party uh, Abonati, BDC. Oh, I love it, man. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, yes. W okay, so we have Austin Scott says WLW is my unicorn bottle. It's a lot of people's unicorns, honestly. Um, Thrasher just won a 2017 GTS last week. Well, you're a lucky man, Thrasher, because the 2017 was the last one that was just really good. 2018 was very good, very solid. 2019, I thought, was kind of a letdown. Uh, so to get back up to that 130 proof, I'm very excited. Uh, yeah, Tammy, uh, Tammy Brennicky as well. I hope Brian, hope you and Tammy, uh, if you're back home, I hope you did well in Vegas. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go back to the next release, which is let's talk about the handy. Let's give him a handy. <laughs> uh, so the 2020 release is uh, six years and two months old at 129 proof. Now, the Thomas H. Handy is probably the one I wouldn't buy again. It's really good, uh, but I just feel like for the money, especially if – well, if you get it for retail, it's not a bad deal. But when you see them for like 300, 400, I think there's there's actually better rise available for even cheaper um, uh, that are probably around that age. I mean, you can get Pikesville rye from, you know, Heaven Hill, which is 101 proof or 100 proof, 101 proof, I think. That's six years old. So, you know, why are you going to pay so much more for, you know, the handy? Uh, let's go to the next one, which is the Sazerac. So Sazerac rye is 18 years old. Uh, this is um, this had a lot of evaporation, 18 years and four months of aging. This was actually chill filtered and bottled at 90 proof. So that one for me would be a definite no. Yeah, it's 18 years old, but to be chill filtered and also only 90 proof, like, dude, give me the flavor. You're stripping that flavor out. Uh, that's that's one I would probably never buy. But the one I'm actually really excited about, which is unfortunately is the one I never really see, is the, the Eagle Rare. So the Eagle Rare this year, 
um, is uh, 18 years and three months old. So it says 17 on it, the Eagle Rare 17, but it's actually 18 years and three months. Um, this is 101 proof. Uh, really excited about that one, but unfortunately the Eagle Rare 17 is the one in the BTAC that usually the stores that I deal with never see or never get. Um, but if any of you guys are lucky enough to get a Eagle Wear this year, uh, 17, then it's it should be pretty amazing this year. So uh, let's see here. We got some more people coming in. Jermaine Compton, what's up? Monroe Doctrine's here. Uh, Brian Brennicky, we're home. Very fun trip with the amazing Clifton. Awesome. Could always go for a handy. 110. Seems a little young. Uh, let's see here. See what you guys are thinking. My bourbon journey says pass. Steve A says you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Eagle Rare 18, exactly. Yeah, so uh, I think I think the the standouts for this year would be the Eagle Rare 17, which is actually 18, and uh, George T. Stag getting back up to that 130 uh, proof point. So if I'm hunting any of these, it will be the Stag, the William Larue Weller, and the uh, Eagle Rare. Uh, normally. I tend to get lucky with getting the Stag and the William Larue Weller. Hopefully this year I could grab an Eagle Rare 17. We'll see. Um, it all depends on how my stores do. So uh, they are always great to work with and work with me. So we'll see what happens. Um, all right. Let's go to some other new stories real quick. Yeah, that 18-year Eagle Rare. It's going to be – that's going to be – once I think hits secondary, I will say – I will – I will predict that that bottle will go for, I think, the first person that puts it up. Whatever moron freaking gets their hands on it first and puts it on secondary is going to sell it for about in upwards of three grand, 2,500 to three grand, I think, for that one easily. That's why I just think the market is. I think that's what they're going to be doing. Unfortunately, that's where we are in today's market, especially on secondary. Um, so I think easily we're going to be looking at about three grand for that, unfortunately, which is crazy because they retail for like 125, 150 bucks. So <laughs> don't get me started on that shit. I, I think I felt like I was on a soapbox last week about secondary and all that stuff. So I'll try to cool tonight. Just stick it to the news here, guys. Um, so let's go next to, um, Let's see. We have some other releases here. Let me talk about these guys right here. So if you're looking at some of these labels. Uh, oh, actually, before that, I did want to talk about this. Uh, Jeff Arnett, uh, Jack Daniels, Master Stiller, he stepped down. We talked a little bit about last year. Uh, I'm sorry, last week. Uh, in addition to Sinatra Select, Heritage Barrel, Tennessee Tasters. Um, Tennessee Rye to its portfolio, all under, you know, Jeff Arnett. He brought a lot of innovation to Jack Daniels and kind of, you know, I think it he he was able to bring Jack Daniels out of that old number seven shadow that everyone just equates Jack Daniels to into some, you know, to make some truly amazing whiskeys. The Heritage Barrel was just a great release. Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, the single barrels. Now we have the Barrel Proof Rye. That I cannot wait to taste coming out soon. Um, so I think I mentioned this last week, but if you guys missed it, uh, Fred Minnick had updated his, um, uh, I guess, a statement from Jeff Barnett saying why he stepped down. He didn't really provide any sort of context as to why. He did say, though, that he has something in the works for a big project that he will be focusing on once he leaves Jack Daniels. So... It's not the last we've seen some uh, from Jeff Arnett, so look forward to either, I don't know, another brand or something on the way from Jeff Arnett, which is still good to hear. I think anyone that adds that much innovation to the whiskey industry should definitely stay in the whiskey industry and keep providing us with great whiskey to drink. Um, let's get back to these labels, guys, because we have a few new things coming out here. Now, if you check out the... Um, so the Appleton Estates, let's see, which ones are those? Those are those are rums, uh, Jamaican rums. But I really wanted to focus your attention 
on the top right one, which is, or the bottom right one, I should say, was the Parker's Heritage Heavy Char Bourbon 10 Year. So the Parker's Heritage is a uh, limited edition release that Heaven Hill releases each year in um, uh, in celebration of Parker Beam. Uh, so this is the 14th edition. Uh, this began in 2007, honors Parker Beam, who is the master distiller for Heaven Hill at the time. So this release appears to build on last year's heavy char rye theme. So beginning with the distillery's traditional rye bourbon mash bill, the barrels used for maturation are charred for one minute and 30 seconds, which is a char level five. Traditionally, Heaven Hill uses a char level three, which is 40 seconds. So after 10 years of maturing in these heavy char barrels, the bourbon enters the bottle at 120 proof, non-chill filtered. Uh, then you have a couple of Balcones um, uh, releases, Grand Crew out of Texas. Um, they partnered with Houston St. Arnold Brewing Company for these limited edition whiskeys. A uh, blend of three barrel bourbon aged beers, a Belgian style, a Russian imperial stout, and an English, uh, English style barley wine. Uh, Balcon is, is then using those barrels to finish these whiskeys. It's 55% ABV. Uh, the cast rank version is at 60% ABV as well. Then you have Templeton, which is partnering up with Iowa based Toppling Goliath Brewery for this rye whiskey. Um, Kentucky bourbon, and then they're aging them in imperial stout casks. Uh, they took the stout barrels, filled them with four-year-old rye to finish the maturation. So a couple of cool things coming out, guys. Um, I don't know about you, but I never see the Parker's Heritage stuff. I don't know when they come out or where they come out, but I have I get samples sent to me, which is awesome of you guys. But I, I barely ever see the bottles. I don't know about you guys. Um, good news variety. Yeah. Wow. This is huge news. JD is the most unirated single barrel out there. I would probably agree with that. Um, let's see. I want those balcones. Yeah, they sound good, man. Adam Dorman says Appleton estate rum is top notch. There you go. Um, always likes to hunt those Parkers. Yeah. I don't see them at all. Like ever. Uh, I think, I think I saw the Parker's Curacao one. What was that? Two years ago they released that? The orange flavored one. Um, but someone was selling it for like 400, 500 in the store. I was like, screw you, man. Um, what's the MSRP on the Parker's Heritage? Let me see if it says here. Um, no price yet. Usually they go for what? About 250 normally. In that range, they're usually anywhere from 200 to 300 to 400, depending on the age of them. This is a 10-year rye, so I'm hoping 200 to 250. Hope it doesn't go past that. Parker's rye is a baller. Yeah, the one last year was – that was a hitter of a whiskey, I will say. Um, let's see. I've never seen Parker's either. Uh, Trev Wilson says only one liquor store I've seen has gotten the Parkers and they save it for their December raffle. Yeah. I think Ohio puts that in their raffle too. I can't remember though. Anyone from Ohio uh, in the chat that, that remembers any of the Parkers being in the raffle? I don't remember offhand. Austin Scott said it was 99 for Carousel. Wow, 99 was retail and they were selling for like 400 Pfft. Again, don't get me started on secondary. <laughs> It's part, it's part of the deal. I get it. Um, all right, guys. What do you say we start up blend again in right now? Let me set this aside. I think the palette's warmed up from this old Carter. Going to put this aside here. So last week we had a couple of, uh, you know, we had a couple of big ballers make it to the finals already, um, including ADHD Whiskey with his Deathbed Blend. We had Richie Z uh, with his Night Owl Blend. We had John Gresham with his store pick blend, and we had um, Ben Compton with his straight out of Compton blend, taking it to the finals. Now we're going to have the remaining blends tonight going head to head. Um, I basically saved I saved the last few um, I saved the lineup, the numbers we had, the same exact uh, list of blends here. Uh, I took out the ones, obviously the numbers we didn't use yet, uh, and they are now in the hat. So no, uh, no doubles, no double up. Figured it would save some time. So let's pick out our first two contenders, guys. One, two, oh, 
That was uh, two there. Hold on, I need my labels. <clears throat> All right. All right, I need my dot labels here. Uh, quick programming note, guys. Um, so uh, Friday, um, Friday you'll be seeing, let's see, my uh, five whiskeys to, so there was the challenge that was put forward. That dude on Reddit said, you only need five whiskeys, you know, ever in life. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bourbon Junkies, ADHD Whiskey, uh, Destination Bourbon, and Whiskey Central, Shayla, did a video on those. I think a couple other channels actually did it too. Um, basically calling out five whiskeys that you only need. Um, and uh, basically, Shayla from Whiskey Central challenged me to do the, to do the video. So uh, that will be coming Friday. And then uh, after that, I have the entire benchmark lineup, the brand new benchmark lineup, every single bottle. I want to thank David Schweibold in the chat for helping me attain those. Uh, so you'll see a video on that. Um, also have Colonel Taylor Battle Proof 2020. That's right. That's coming soon too. I think next week we'll see that review, hopefully. Um, well, definitely. I'll definitely get that one out there. Uh, as long as all goes well with the bottle traveling, I was lucky enough to get that. Um, and what else? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, and then the entire rabbit hole lineup. So Rabbit Hole reached out to me and they said, hey, we love your channel. We were checking out your videos and we realized you did not review anything from Rabbit Hole. And the only Rabbit Hole I've had was one of the original bottles when they first released, the PX Sherry and one of the original bourbons. Uh, they were pretty much, they were a lot younger then. Uh, I think they've gotten a little bit more age now. So, and they've renamed everything, rebranded everything. So I'm going to be reviewing the Rabbit Hole lineup as well too. So and I also have a couple of uh, What's on the Shelf Wednesdays uh, geared up, too. I haven't been releasing them lately, guys, because Wednesdays for me at work have been a little bit busy lately. So I'm trying to uh, – so what I did is I recorded a few uh, – that I recorded two, actually, that I have in the uh, – that you know I have backed up that I just need to edit and get out there. So hopefully you'll see those soon, too. So with that, let's get into Blend Again, and here we go. Let's grab our first two glasses here. Hey, wise guy, whiskey guys in the house. He has a well, where to go? He has a blend in there tonight. That's another channel you guys can check out. Wise guy, whiskey guy. Always nice when someone wants you to review their whole. <laughs> exactly, Kilco. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Keith Schmidt says E.H. Taylor barrel proof is my unicorn. A lot of unicorns flying tonight. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. Oh, we got the last blend, number 22, which is V, which is, oh, shit, right off the bat, Jeffrey Wack, the subterranean homesick blend, going against, dum -da -dum. well, number three. Oh, shit, wise guy, whiskey guy. <laughs> it's wise guy, whiskey guy versus Jeffrey Wack in the first lineup tonight. All right, let's get them. Um, here's Jeffrey Wax, Subterranean Homesick Blend. And then we need Wise Guy Whiskey Guys, which is... Where's yours, buddy? There it is. Blend number two, we called it. Um, so Wise Guy Whiskey Guy was... Uh, yeah, I named it the Wise Guy for you. So here we go. This is uh, already happening quick with these two hitters. So let's do that. Save a little for the turn here, just in case. And then we have Jeffrey Wax, Subterranean Homesick Blend. Jeffrey Wax said, oh, snap, he's ready. Okay. All right, let's pour this out. About even. Okay. All right, guys. This is a pretty good matchup. We have Wise Guy, Whiskey Guy, Jeffrey Wack. Um, so Jeffrey Wack was 22, so that he was V. 
And then we have uh, C. All right. All right, let's line them up. And let's see who comes out on top, guys. Now, I do have uh, the information for both of their blends, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to mix these up here. Good luck to you guys. Live from the Whack Cave. <laughs> Edward Fulmer, this is a this is a this is this is a good question, guys. Would you rather have a handy or just whack it? I don't know. Gonna keep Jeff Perkins, subterranean homesick blend, blessed blend name ever. Yeah, um, I'm actually gonna give a prize to the finals for the. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you guys vote for the best blend name and whoever wins the best name, I'll send a little something uh, for them as well. So just another incentive for you guys naming your uh, your blends. So I, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's go to the first one here and see what we get on the nose. I feel like I'm picking up a lot of citrus. Citrus and nuttiness on this one here. Little chocolate, some black pepper. Ooh. This one's got some um, some really nice uh, some really nice flavors here coming off the nose. Your vanilla cake, you definitely have some spices in there too. It's a very well balanced nose here. That blend on the nose so far is really good. Let's uh, compare it to this one. This one's lighter and sweeter. There's almost like a strawberry cotton candy thing going on in this nose. Wow, a lot of strawberry, actually. Where's ADHD whiskey? Blueberries. I think there's some blueberries in here, buddy. I think uh, I think he would like this blend. Let me oh, let me unclick that. There you go. <laughs> uh, go here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna try this one. This one, if I had to go off the nose, I like this one on the nose a little bit better than this one. So here we go. Oh, that's delicious. ADHD says friggin' blueberries. Yeah, man. Oh, also, Whiskey Central and I are collaborating soon. Um, my uh, my girlfriend, actually, I let her have run of the whiskey room for a night. I told her what shelves that she can choose from. So basically, my girlfriend came in here, and she picked out five blind samples that I don't know what's in it, and either does uh, Shayla. And I sent them to Shayla from Whiskey Central. And when she is up and running and ready to do live streams, we're going to do a collaboration and um, uh, figure out what the hell my girlfriend picked in these uh, these these whiskeys and bourbons. So that should be a fun time. I can't wait for you to go live, Shayla, soon. So This actually um, this tastes like a really good Knob Creek single barrel. That's what it's reminding me of. It, it tastes like like one of those really good 13, 14, 15-year-old single barrel picks. Uh, but, but, but more fruit. There's more fruit kind of layered on top of it. Yeah, completely. It really is reminding me of that. All right. So this is more of the strawberry, like candy type note to it. This could have been like one of those, uh, what we had, the Gobstopper. <laughs> uh, the Everlasting Gobstopper blend could have been a really cool name for it. Ooh. 
Wow, these two are completely different. It just depends on what my palate likes right now. We got Stephen Buck. He says, the bad boy of bourbon. Am I the bad boy of bourbon? I guess with my recent videos, right? Um, where does the WT Masters keep bottle and bond stand in your current ranking of 2020 releases? All right, so after I did the old Carter uh, review, a lot of people were asking me, where does it rank and what are your rankings for you know your favorite bourbons this year? Um, I still have to put Wild Turkey 17 year ball and bond as my number one. Um, you know, that's probably not a popular opinion amongst a lot of people, but for me personally, I just think it brought everything I love in a bourbon plus, but plus, you know, I am a huge Wild Turkey fan and I love the old Turkey funk. So when you combine that with the flavor that was in that bottle, it's easily my favorite. It keeps evolving as more air gets in it. And I love that about a bourbon, especially a good, well-aged bourbon. Um, second still for me is the Barstown Chateau, Chateau de la Baude, which is an absolute, just an amazing hitter of a, of a bourbon. Um, and then third would probably be the old Carter Batch 5. Now, I still have a couple of others to try. I have the Colonel Taylor Barrel Proof. I have two Joseph Magnuses bottled in Bond. I got a taste. Um, uh, Four Gate Batch 6 is up there too. Delicious, uh, delicious uh, bourbon as well. Um, I mean, what other standouts were there? I mean, if you're looking at just some standout bourbons this year, you know, you have to look at, you know, Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered was up there for me uh, just because of sheer value. Uh, I was a huge fan of the Blood Oath Pack 6 this year. Thought that was a great release. Um, if you're looking at rye whiskeys, there's, always, there's only really one rye I've had this year that really stood out, and that was the Rare Breed Rye. That thing is an absolute animal of a whiskey. I absolutely love that stuff. Um, so I actually might have two turkeys in my top two with the 17-year and uh, top two categories, and I'm also one of my favorite ryes. So we'll see how it goes, but that would be my lineup. But it's close. I mean, there's a lot of close ones there. I'll probably do a blind tasting, but all three of those, the Old Carter, the Turkey, and the Chateau de la Botte are so incredibly different, which is probably why I like them so much. They just bring a lot more to the table. Um, let's see here. I think I missed some. Mass and Drum, thank you for all your support for so many other channels you rock. Oh, thanks, Tammy. I appreciate that. Will Henderson with a five dollar super chat. Cheers to twenty five k. Thank you, man. Turkey mouth all the way. Jason Busey. Speaking of wild turkey, I love Kentucky Spirit. How does Rare Breed compare? Uh, so Rare Breed compared to Kentucky Spirit. Kentucky Spirit is usually a bit younger. Remember, Kentucky Spirit is just basically a single barrel wild turkey one hundred and one. Um, they generally are about six or eight years old for the single barrels. Whether or not they're doing older ones. I think they are picking some 10 years in there too now. So it really depends on what you're looking for, but that's Wild Turkey 101. Rare Breed is a blend. So Rare Breed, you're looking at, um, I think, 6, 8, and some 12 year in there. So it's a little bit more rounded in flavor, but more of a punch in the mouth. The only thing, though, is that you know they're both chill filtered. Um, if you like the Wild Turkey 101 profile, I think Kentucky Spirit really does it well. Um, they recently just changed warehouses at Wild Turkey where predominantly the 101 picks where the Kentucky Spirit picks will be coming from. Eddie Russell said that they are coming out way better out of that warehouse. So keep an eye on that. Check out Rare Bird 101. I forgot the exact warehouse letter that they're going to be starting to come out um, of that warehouse and just creating some really great flavor profiles. And then you have uh, Rare Breed, which with a blend of all those ages – even though it's a high proof, it's going to be a little bit more rounded in flavor. <clears throat> uh, my bourbon journey. Congrats on 25K, Maverick. You're the best. See you in a month. Awesome, man. Can't wait to see you too. Scotty, my bourbon journey. We're going to be hanging out and <clears throat> be prepared for a great live stream, I, I think, at some point down here in the whiskey room. Um, let's see. Or the rare 15-year Kentucky spirit. Yeah, they, they, there are some rare ones out there. But... Um, I do think some of the uh, the newer Kentucky spirits are going to be coming out of a different warehouse now. 
according to uh, Eddie Russell, because I think he's liking the flavor profiles. So, all right, so let's pick a winner here. This one is really sweet, really delicious, but I love the balance here and just the overall flavor profile. This one has oak, it has sweetness, it has fruitiness, a nuttiness. This one just seems to be more of a rounded blend, whereas this is just primarily more on the sweeter side. I think this is higher proof. I would be surprised if there's not a good amount of Buffalo Trace stuff in that one. One more sip of this. Yeah, that just seems Buffalo Tracy to me. Yeah, and this one is just way more rounded in flavor. Really good balance. Let's see who the winner is, guys. Coming in on top, guys, we have – let me just double check. I always forget who the letters are. Um – This one is going to Wise Guy Whiskey Guy with this blend. Jeffrey Wack uh, with his Subterranean Homesick Blend. Delicious blend, dude. It's very sweet. It's very delicious. It just was missing a little bit of a balance thing for me when it comes to the oak. And it's very sweet up front. I think it's a great blend. Very fruity. Uh, but, yeah, this one just a little bit rounded in flavor. But awesome blends. Really good ones to start off with tonight, guys. Oh, we got some uh, super chats coming in here. Tim Evans says, congrats on 25K. You taking a Pappy 15 ER GTR, so William, if you could pick one this year. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, if I could pick one. Well, since I'm lucky enough to get GTS or William the Reweller, or I have a couple bottles of each, I would probably lean on the Pappy 15 or ER 17 if I can get them at retail. Um, or at least close to retail, just because they're the rarer, they're the rarer of the two. Um, but if you had all four in front of me and they were at like secondary prices, I would probably grab the William Reweller. Good question though. Uh, let's see. Patrick Fulmer says 25k is awesome. Well-deserved cheers. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate that, man. Uh, Kilco, Mash and Drummer, Rising Tide, lists all boats. I swear I got 25 subs from a mere mention during one of your streams. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, definitely go check out Kilco as well, putting out some stuff, putting out some great content as well. Mark, congrats on 25K. Wow, you're famous now. <laughs> I doubt I'm famous. Uh, Steve A, this is easy. If you could pick one, the ER-17 is easy. Yeah, I think... I think being the ER-17 is an 18 year, I'd probably lean towards that more than anything, actually. If I had to really think about it. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to have to go Wise Guy Whiskey Guy for this one. Congrats, buddy. Uh, but thank you so much, Jeffrey Wack. I will be enjoying this blend because it's a damn good sweet blend. <clears throat> Let me make sure I got the right one. Yeah, so that's the winner is C, Jeffrey Wack. Moving on down. Congrats. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Uh, Jeffrey Wack, you actually might just win something because I think you're going to win best blend name either way. <laughs> that that name, when I saw Subterranean Homesick Blend, I thought that was the greatest name that I saw. Um, I'm trying to even see if there was any ones that even kind of – the Maltese Falcon was pretty good, which is in the running tonight. Just because I'm a, I am love Humphrey Bogart movies. Um, Old Charters, Deathbed Blend is pretty cool too. The Insomnia, that's a good one. Straight Out of Compton's pretty good. There's some really good ones though. Hey, Steam Face, thank you so much, man. Thanks for coming in tonight. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water. You guys know what to do. If I say water, you got to drink. All right, let's go to the next two. I'm going to try to move through these a little quickly, guys. Let's go to the next two here. Let's see what we get. 
Let's see who's next. Actually, first, um, I want to – I think this is your – Jeff Wack, I want to see what's in your blend because I'll be surprised if there's not a lot of Buffalo Trace stuff in there. So let's see what's in Jeffrey Wack's blend. I'm confident you enjoy my winning blend. I recently did a blind where Pikesville beat MGP and realized the Bear Legal Rye can do well because it sticks out of the lineup. I'm also a big fan of the 2020 High West Bur Rye, but – which was higher proof. These events inspired my blend. So subterranean homesick blend. We have a Joseph Magnus OHLQ barrel pick. Okay, so that's where that fruitiness came from. A bone snapper rye, rhetoric 24. So 60% Joseph Magnus, 30% bone snapper rye, and 10% rhetoric 24. Wow. That thing was surprisingly sweet. You know what might have killed it for you was the rhetoric. That that 90 proof rhetoric. As as good as it is, though, it just it does. The the lower proof stuff will mellow out your blend. But the Magnus and the Rye together, it's good. It's got more of the spice in the back end, which I think is what I was tasting with the Magnus uh being in there because of that uh, you know, that triple cask. And the OHLQ barrel, I haven't had that one yet. That's awesome, man. Good job on that blend. Yeah, Bone Snapper Rye is killer. You're right, bourbon buddies. That is good shit. All right, let's see what the next two are, guys. Here we go. We have number 13, which is Michael Cook with his blend called the Kitchen Sink. Pretty cool. And then we have number 16, which is The Ghost by Alex Thomas. All right, guys. You guys are up next. So the Kitchen Sink, Michael Cook. Let's see where that one is. Oh, well, here's Alex Thomas's blend. That's 16. And now we need the kitchen sink. Is that what this one is? Nope. Uh, what I say, Michael Cook? Is that is that him, the kitchen sink? Yep, Michael Cook. All right, got it. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's go with these. Save a little bit. Wise Guy Whiskey Blend, congrats. You're moving on, buddy. Uh, so Michael Cook, and then we have Alex Thomas with the blend called The Ghost. All right. We are set. Let's go 13 and 16. This is awesome, guys. All right, let's mix these around a little bit here. Thrasher, wait, there were two kitchen sinks. The kitchen sink. Um... You see here. Oh yeah, sorry, Thrasher. I probably just cut. Actually, yeah, he didn't have a name for his. Uh, he didn't have a name for his blend. Actually, Michael Cook. So I probably copied and pasted that. I got to give it another name. Let's see. Michael Cooks was. It was probably in my head when I was naming it. <laughs> So let's call it someone else. Let's say um, I'm going to call it too many cooks in the kitchen just in case he makes it through so I know how to label it. Yeah. See, I was I was inspired by your blend name, Thrasher. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mike Cook. Oh, he's in the chat. I think. I think it was just left over there. I didn't know I was supposed to name it publicly. Yeah, yeah, my cook. It's okay. I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna call your blend too many cooks in the kitchen. All right, let's go to the first one here. Let's see what we get. Let me put these aside. Here we go. Jason Busey. So does anyone else think that chicken tenders sound amazing right now? They kind of do, man. 
Order them up. Thrasher says, see, you liked my aim the best. <laughs> you might be right. And there's, there's something in there that's familiar, but I can't quite. Thrasher is to using my name again. <laughs> This has like a dusty corn note to it, which is really nice. There's a nice smoke to it. There's like a beautiful like smoky note to this one. Like a real nice barrel char. That's what I'm getting. Like chocolate caramel and barrel char on this one. The nose on that one's pretty sweet. This one, a little bit more rice spice here. More vanilla. Yeah, again, this one's more on the sweeter side, but a little bit nutty, a little bit uh, fruity. Nothing really standing out too much in the nose on this one. Let's go for a sip here. Oh. That's good. That's fruity as that's fruity as shit. Wow. I would expect there to be something finished in that one. Man, that is really sweet. The chocolate's coming through on that one. Apple. It's like a dark raisin on the back of the on the back of the palate in that one. That one's freaking phenomenal. Shit. Uh, Edward Fulmer says only blends for me tonight. Up next, Stag Junior Batch Ten and ECB Five Twenty. Why not? Yeah. Why the hell not? Go for it. Uh, Fruit Loops. I wouldn't say Fruit Loops. Yeah, there's like this sweet and fruity kind of like chocolate covered raisin, like a raisinette type note on that one. Let's try this one here. This one's even fruitier. <laughs> Whereas this one is kind of darker and richer and fruit. This one is really fruity from the from jump here with a you know nice finish on the back end. Getting like apricots on the back of that one. Tons of vanilla cake. Baking spices, a lot of cinnamon on the back end of that one, too. There's a slight nuttiness. Wow. This is really close so far. I really don't know which one I like better. They're really close. So whenever I have a close matchup, it really comes down to finish. So let's go to the uh, – because the palettes on both of these are really delicious. So just really – it comes – you know, which one gives me the best finish, best experience overall. Really nice. Yeah, there's like a I feel like I'm getting like a like a grape or like cognac type flavor on the back end of that one.
Yeah, then I have to go with this one. This one just has a longer, more interesting finish, whatever this one is. All right, let's find out what it is, guys. Here we go. So this one goes to... Michael Cook. Too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> Congratulations, man. That is a very, very solid blend. I love the mix of, uh, of sweet, of oak. That's really good. That's a damn nice blend, man. Michael Cook, congrats, buddy. Too many cooks in the kitchen is making it through. Uh, all right, so that was, let's see. Hell yeah, man. Too many cooks in the kitchen. There it is. You're staying. And Alex Thomas, yours was just, just. I mean, you guys are really neck and neck. Just um, Michael Cooks just had a little bit more of a finish on it, which was a little bit more interesting. It was a really nice, like kind of a grape cognac chocolate thing going on in the back end. And that's why I won. So, all right. Nice. So that is the winner for that one. So let's put this down here so I don't confuse it. Get this one over here. All right, guys, so far, just awesome blends. Mike Cook, congrats, buddy. Wait, Jason Busey says, ha-ha, I asked the wife to stop by and get some chicken tenders on the way home from swim practice. She said no. <laughs> Door dash it is. <laughs> you get it. You go get, your, you go get your stuff, man. Go get your chicken tenders. All right, so big question, guys. Chicken tenders or chicken McNuggets, what's the sauce? I am a sweet and sour guy. Who loves a sweet and sour? Are you barbecue or are you honey mustard? I like to get sweet and sour for my nuggets, and then I like to dip my French fries in the sweet and sour sauce. Any Anybody else do that? I love doing that shit. That's my favorite. All right, I'm picking one, and I'm picking another one. Here we go. All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. This, these kinds of questions. All right, honey mustard. So Andy Gray is a honey mustard guy, okay. John Gresham, sweet and sour, very nice. Barbecue, David Webb says gravy. <laughs> uh, ranch, all day, okay. Gotta love ranch. Bourbon Buddy, sweet and sour, all day. Uh, Keegan Burdolph comes in with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, man. Wildlife and Whiskey says ranch all day, no question. Ranch and tangy barbecue mix. Um, Tammy Brennicky says sweet and sour all the way. Ranch is number two. ADHD says sweet and sour from McNuggets. We best friends. Yes, ADHD. We would have to fight over the sweet and sour sauce, buddy. <laughs> Uh, the Mastin Drum, what was in the losing blend? Oh, that's right. Okay, so Alex Thomas. Um, I think I have to look up his blend here. Let me see. There we go. Let's see if he wrote what's in his blend here. Oh, here it is. All right, let's see what was in his blend. All right, so the blend contains. So this is Alex Thomas's blend. This is a this was a hell of a blend here. Two ounces of the following whiskeys: Maker's Mark, Edmund Williams Bottled and Bond, Weller Special Reserve, Country Ham, ECBP C919, Angels Envy, Jim Beam Bonded, Old Granddad 114, Russell's Reserve 10 Year, Colonel Taylor. Ooh, excuse me, Colonel Taylor Small Batch, ECBP 519. What does that say? Oh, Blue Note Bourbon Single Barrel Store Pick. Stag Junior Batch 11, Early Times Bottle and Bond, J.W. Dant Bottle and Bond, and Henry McKenna Single Barrel. So he had – that's more of an infinity blend than anything. That was a crazy blend. Very good. It was very, very close. It's just that uh, Mike Cooks won a little bit more on the, um, on the finish. So 
put that down there. All right, so who do we got next? We have Jeff Perkins with the Percolator. That's the first choice. Going against Return of the Mac, Eric McDaniel, who had an entry into the uh, the, the World Blend Whiskey Channel. Let's see if he fares better uh, with his American Blend. So Return of the Mac, uh, Eric McDaniel, and then we have, uh, let's see, the Percolator, Jeff Perkins. So Jeff Perkins is right here. And uh, Eric McDaniels is right here. Perfect. All right. Let's get into it. Open it up. This thing doesn't want to open. There we go. If I take the tape off, it'll be easier. All right. All right, guys, here we go. So this is Jeff Perkins, the Percolator. I think I named that one the Percolator. And then Eric McDaniels here with his bourbon blend. Pretty close in color. Jeff Perkins looks a little darker. But we will see how they taste. Oh, no, this is uh, for that one. Holy tape. All right. Put this one aside, Jeff Perkins aside. So we have nine and we have 19. Nine versus 19. Good luck to Jeff Perkins and good luck to Eric McDaniel. All right, let's mix them up here. Uh, sweet and sour. Gravy is great. Well, yeah, everyone loves gravy. <laughs> everyone loves the freaking gravy. You got to love gravy. Um, so I'm curious to hear from you guys. What is – have any of you guys been on the hunt for the Old Forester birthday bourbon? Have you seen it in stores? Is it crazy, you know, is it crazy secondary marketing? I've heard the prices for this year's birthday bourbon – uh, which is 10 years old and 98 proof is going for astronomical amounts. I keep people keep sending me photos of it that are um, with price tags in upwards of five to six hundred dollars. So I'm wondering if, if any of you guys are seeing the same thing out there in the market. Let me know in the chat. I uh, have some like topics like lined up for you guys. So while I'm tasting, we could kind of chat and talk about it. Um, so let's go here. Good luck, guys. Oh, Alex Tomic, so you're in the chat, buddy. Congrats, buddy. That was a great blend. You blended a lot of good stuff. You just lost on the finish. My Cooks had a bit of a better finish than yours. Austin Scott paid $180 at the distillery. Oh, good for you, buddy. John Gresham, Mash and Drum, says, got a request in my local store that they give me the opportunity to buy one when they come in. Uh, okay. So that's good. Oh, Old Forester birthday bourbon. Okay. So this bent, this blend is pretty straightforward. Uh, bourbon notes here. I'm getting a little bit more citrus on here, so I'm thinking either high rye or rye in there. This one is probably the most vanilla forward that I've smelled tonight. Was he uh, missed the email by the hour? I would have drove down for it. Okay. Oh, shit. Rob from Whiskey in the Six is in the house. What's up, Rob? Nice to see you, buddy. Congratulations on 25K, Jason. Cheers, buddy. Dude, always nice to see you, Rob. Always nice to see you. Uh, if any of you guys haven't checked out Rob Whiskey in the Six, man, he is a uh, not only has a great channel, but he's an amazing dude. So, cheers and nice to uh, thanks for dropping in, buddy. Um, I do like the OFB 2020. It's tropical. Yeah, Austin, that's what I said on the review. I think it's very tropical this year. 
There's a lot of that. <laughs> I equated it to, you know, the, you get those little lunch, uh, what are those things called? When The little Del Monte fruit packs, the little fruit cocktails that you took to school when you were little. Little things you open and then you take to school. It's got the peaches, a little pineapple. Usually there's like that white fruit in there. You don't know really what that is. It's just kind of this weird thing. There's usually like one cherry in the fruit cocktail. Um, that's what I equated it to. It tasted that tropical to me. Um, it also had a, a, a little bit of a white chocolate note in there as well, but mostly very tropical. So I'm glad you agree. I, I definitely think along those same lines. I was picking up a lot of that. Yeah, Austin Scott, I'm different. Yeah, I do think it's very different as well. Richie Z, congrats to 25K. That's amazing. Cheers. Thank you so much, Richie. Always love uh, having you in the chat, man. Um, Jason Coates, best beard on whiskey tube. Oh, uh, yeah, risking the six. Easily the best beard. I can. I have a pretty good beard, but I can only attain his darkness. Only hope to attain that dark beard he has, man. All right, let's go for a sip of the first one here. Oh, wait, I just got maple syrup on here. Ooh. That was new. Wasn't getting that on the first scent. This is like that IHOP friggin' maple syrup, man. Ooh, sweet. All right, let's go for a sip of this one. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful blend. Maple syrup, chocolate, citrus, raspberries, spiciness on the back end. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a good blend. All right, let's go to this one here. Oh, very similar. Oh, my God. These have pretty close uh, noses. This one has a bit more of an oak presence to it, which is kind of nice. Uh, Kevin Cameron, would you have put in for an OFBB 2020 or EHT Amaranth in a raffle? Easily the OFBB. I was lucky enough to try the Amaranth of the Gods last year at the Bastards Ball, um, and I was, I was really excited when I smelled the Amaranth the Grain of the Gods from E.H. Taylor. When I smelled it, I'm like, ooh, this could be really good. The nose on that was really incredible. I took a sip of it, and the thing just died. It just fell flat. There was The nose did not match the palate at all. You can nose that glass all day, but when you taste it, it just takes a deep downturn for me personally. I was not impressed with the Grain of the Gods, unfortunately. I love the nose on it. But honestly, when it came to the flavor, it just lost something. I don't know what it was. It didn't have that Colonel Taylor sweetness. So I think that grain of the gods just made it, just flattened it out a little bit, unfortunately. Interesting release, but it just didn't really do it for me. Let's go for a sip of number two. Oh, man. Oh, shit, that's grape. That is grape aid. Grape soda in that one. Coming back. Oh. This one tastes like this one, but with like this grape burst at the back end. I think that one has a little bit better of a finish, too. I might be going with this one right here. Quick sip of water, then we'll select. Uh, ADHD. I picked small batch over Amaranth blind. Yeah, totally. Actually, if anyone hasn't seen, uh, actually, ADHD Whiskey also just did a video with, um, he did all the Wellers in a, in a blind tasting. The single barrel, what is it, CYPB, Antique, and Foolproof. I did that same exact blind, and my my uh, lineup was exactly the same as yours, uh, Matt. So um, I totally agree. 
I thought the single barrel was um, okay. The fact that people are paying six to seven hundred dollars for that just makes me giggle because it's so stupid, really stupid. The CYPB was definitely like a slight step above. I think the CYPB uh, this year was a little bit. It was definitely better than the first release. Um, but then, yeah, the antique and then the full proof just blew it away. So if anyone hasn't seen that video, definitely go check it out from ADHD whiskey. It's a, it's a real, it definitely, uh, opens the eyes a little bit. I'm planning on doing the same blind. Um, I'm waiting for another sample of a single barrel. So I'm hoping to do that same blind tasting. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but it was a great video. Yeah. The small batch is, I'm telling you. The, the Colonel Taylor Barrel Proof is my favorite of the lineup, I think. Um, I haven't had a Colonel Taylor special release, a Colonel Taylor anything that has beaten any of the Barrel Proof. Um, yeah, the Barrel Proof is really hard to find, unfortunately. It's not as hard to find or as upcharged as the special releases like the 18-year marriage and the Grain of the Gods. But, you know, it was it was up there. I'm gonna go with this one for this uh, for this blind tasting. So let's see which one came out. We have that one against that one. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Jeff Perkins, the percolator. This thing is a beast. The flavor, the proof, the finish on this thing is what what blew me away. That like grape note on here is incredible. Oh. That's delicious. Another amazing blend, man. You guys, this year, you guys brought it because, again, a lot of these head-to-heads are coming down to the finish. Both of these blends, again, amazing noses, amazing front of the palates, but it's the finish. When the finish hangs on, it does something a little bit different on the back end. That's why I'm choosing it. Um, but Jeff Perkins, congrats. You are moving on to the next round. Um, that's an awesome, awesome blend. Whoo, Jeff Perkins. Um, and then we have, uh, let's see, what was in this? So this was Eric McDaniel's Return of the Mac here. This one was delicious too. This is Eric McDaniel's blend. I feel like something there was finished. It's very fruity. Um, either that. Or I'm thinking there's a good amount of Buffalo Trace, maybe something. It's very sweet. It's very fruity. So let's find out what's in his blend. Oh, Eric McDaniel. All right, here we go. So Eric McDaniel's blend. Stag Junior Batch 13, Buffalo Trace. Eagle Rare, Buffalo Trace. E.H. Taylor, Single Barrel, Buffalo Trace. Um, Blood Oath Pack 6. That was the fruitiness I was getting. There's the cognac. That's why I liked it so much. Then you had the Blanton straight from the barrel to round it out. Holy shit. Yeah, that, that's a phenomenal blend. So we have one ounce Stag Junior Batch 13, one ounce Eagle Rare, one and a half ounces of E.H. Taylor Single Barrel, one ounce Blood Oath Pack 6, and a half ounce of Blanton straight from the barrel. I'm wondering if you put more straight from the barrel in there, if it would have improved the finish, but that was an incredible blend, dude. Eric McDaniel blending some really good shit together. I think the sweetness of the uh, the Buffalo Trace stuff really complemented the, um, the fruitiness of the Blood Oath really well, the cognac cask. I was definitely getting that cognac on the palate. Maybe blending that brought it out because it, it was really fruity, really sweet, delicious blend, man. That was awesome. Um, Eric McDaniel. No, you don't suck. Again. You, don't, you don't suck. It's just the finish on this one is just you're losing on the finish. <laughs> That's why I'm wondering if you added a little bit more scrape from the barrel if it would have improved the finish. But that is an incredible. This, when I first took a sipper, I just said how good it was. Unfortunately, you went up against someone that had just as good of a palate but a better finish. Um, Keegan, what do you think of uh, Pack 6 Solo? I was a huge fan of this year's release because I love Cognac. Uh, so I think that Blood Oath and um, 
uh, Lux Road Distillers. I think what what they do there, um, what John Rempe does, I think he has he kind of does what I like in a finished bourbon. He 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 finishes stuff where the bourbon flavors get to stand out a little bit, um, but also where the finish complements the bourbon, not the other way around. Sometimes you get finished bourbons that overpower the bourbon flavor, and it's just all you just taste. That's why I didn't like the Curacao, the Parkers. I felt like I was drinking Tang. It was like orange Tang in that thing. I hated it. Well, I didn't hate it. Hate's a strong word, but I didn't like it. I thought the orange Curacao completely overpowered the Parkers Heritage, um, the sample that I tried, and I did not like it. Um, but I think, you know, it's just – it's good stuff. So uh, – Hey, Bourbon Bites is in the house. What's up, Clifton? Everyone go subscribe to Bourbon Bites as well. Great channel. Combining video games and also whiskey. There's not many better combinations uh, than that. Um, yeah, this is a great blend, man. Again, you guys are blending some really unique stuff together. Stuff that makes me want to try some of this on my own and, see, and toy with it. Uh, but yeah. I actually was pretty spot on on this one. I thought there was something finished in there, Blood Oath Pack 6, and I thought it was very sweet. I, I said there's probably a good amount of Buffalo Trace in there, and it's all Buffalo Trace except for Blood Oath. All right, my palate's not doing too bad tonight. <laughs> all right, so that one goes down there. We'll keep Jeff Perkins. Uh, Jeff Perkins, congrats. Where did his one? Oh, I already put it aside. All right, guys, let's go to the number two. We got four head-to-heads left. It's getting down to it. Let me see what my next topic was here that I was coming up with here. Um, trying to look here. Let me pick my first two first here. Boop. All right. So next up, we have Anthony McKeever coming in with his blend called Relatively Neat. Nice name. I like that one. Going against number 18, The Garrison from Alec Garinger. All right, or Garinger. Not sure how to say that. Um, so number six, Anthony McKeever, where are you? With uh, Relatively Neat. There you are right here. Going against The Garrison with Alec Garinger. I think that's this one right here. Yep, Alec Garinger. Here's his blend. All right, good luck, fellas. Okay, relatively neat. Yeah, I got plenty in there. Perfect. All right, we got six and we got 18. All right, here we go. These are out. All right, let's mix these up here. All right, trying to catch up on the comments here. Alec Garinger. Oh, he's sweating. It's okay, buddy. Jeff Perkins, your blend might be hard to beat, buddy. Yeah, Jeff Perkins' blend was freaking awesome. Good luck to everybody tonight, guys. This has been uh, awesome. Um just a uh, the the quality of blends I'm getting this year is getting harder and harder. You guys are like alchemists. <laughs> it's been pretty insane. Um. So all right. So here's the question that I had: What would be the most you guys would pay for? Um. So I had a couple different Pappy Van Winkles listed. Let's just say Pappy 15. What would be the most you would pay for Pappy 15? So retail. Has it, you know, about 120, 150 bucks, something like that. Um, if you saw it in a store, Pappy 15. To, so like me, I don't have any Pappy Van Winkles in my collection. None. Uh, 15, 20, 23. I don't have one bottle. I don't have an old Rip 10 and I don't have a Van Winkle 12. But if you had the Pappy 15, what would be the most you would pay for it in a store if you saw it at a semi-reasonable price? What would it be? And discuss. 
All right, here we go. Kevin Campbell, let's see here. Oh, I missed it. Forgot to say congrats on 25K or as Dan puts it, quarter million. <laughs> yes. Yes, Dan likes to uh, – the bourbon junkies like to say uh, quarter million. <laughs> All right, so William Davalar says retail. Okay. John Gresham, 300 for Pappies. The most he would pay. That would probably be the most I would go just to get a rare bottle. Um, I would never, ever pay the 1500 or the 1600 that people ask for it. But 300 to me is pretty reasonable. Keegan says 200 Tolf Thomas, 300 So we all have the 300s. But I just saw, um, let's see here. Tim Heaven says 300 all day. Brad says 500 okay. Christopher David, 300 ADAC is at 199 okay. Alejandro says 250 tops for me. Hey, Rock Up Reviews in the house. What's up, Ed? Everyone's got to go check out Ed's channel, the Rock Up Review. Awesome stuff. JJ, 200 to 225 Richie Z says 400 tops, so that's the highest I've seen so far is 400 Brian Brennicky, don't think I paid more than two fifty. You guys are good shoppers. Austin Scott, five hundred for the fifteen. That's the high mark. Kevin Campbell, four hundred. Okay. Rock up review, thirteen fifty. <laughs> oh, that's why I love you, Ed. Jason Busey, my top for any whiskey is four hundred, and I've only paid that once for dark art. Oh, nice. I made. I might pay that for Pappy 15, maybe. Okay. Makes sense. Gary says 350. Linux Cats at 200. Um, oh, where did that go? I just saw something from. Don't give them any ideas, people. They might be watching. <laughs> Tommy D says zero. Okay. Who has no interest in Pappy? Who doesn't give a shit? Keegan says, the most important question, what would you pay for Blanton sitting by Taka? <laughs> so Keegan in the chat, he actually works at a liquor store, and um, I think it's, a, it's an amazing idea. He told me that every now and then uh, in the stores, he'll take a bottle of Blanton's, which he sells at retail. They sell it at retail, which is amazing. And what Keegan does is they, they will put a random bottle of Blanton's and put it on some random shelf in the store. So it could be next to the tequila, it could be next to wine, it could be next to vodka. And then basically the customers have to go out and whoever finds it first gets the bottle, which I think is an amazing idea. I would go to that store freaking 10 times a week. That's awesome. Austin Scott says, I paid three fifty dollars for Evan Williams 23 at the distillery, which is the most expensive bottle I've bought. That's probably the most I've bought and recently was at three fifty dollars for that. Um, I did pay that for, for that bottle. Jeff Huck says, I'll do two to two fifty for Pappy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Tammy, whatever Brian will pay. <laughs> I love it. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Greg Failer says, I've had Pappy twice, Pappy 15. Amazing nose. Taste is less than amazing. I go 300. Uh, I would agree. Um, oh, Edward Fulmer. Attention, y'all. What other weeder should I blend with this Larceny Barrel Proof? So, Edward, I'm going to tell you the winning blend from the first year of Blendageddon, which I don't know if you've tried yet. It's with regular Larceny, but I'm curious how it would work with Larceny Barrel Proof. Blend Larceny Barrel Proof with an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and Antique 107 if you have it. Blend those three together and see how that tastes. Mass and Drum, I just paid $325 for Old Carter Bourbon Batch 5. Better than Pappy all day. See, I told you. I speak of the truth. I speak the truth, Home Slice. This Old Carter Batch 5, man, I'm telling you. Let all those freaking idiots chase down the freaking bullshit, the, the Buffalo Chase. 
You know, I just want to say something real quick. I don't hate Buffalo Buffalo Trace, or as I call it, Buffalo Chase. I don't hate them. I think they actually get a bad rap because of the prices that people post for their stuff um, when it comes to the secondary. Um, I think by association, Buffalo Trace and Sazerac get bad raps for that. But, but remember, Buffalo Trace isn't the one setting the prices. I do fault Buffalo Trace for putting out all these different whiskeys that, you know, like Weller Single Barrel, Weller CYPB, Buffalo, uh, I'm sorry, um, Blanton Straight from the Barrel, Blanton's uh, Gold. They do tend to put out a lot of stuff that most people will never see, which is, which is I do fault them for that. Um, and they make this big, grandiose, uh, you know, press release about it. For the first time ever in history, Buffalo Trace introduces Blanton straight from the barrel, only available overseas and now available here at uh, in the United States. Only we're going to charge you 30 bucks more and you'll never fucking see it. I fault them for that. I don't fault them completely, though, for distributors and for... Because remember, once it goes to distributors and they make all the liquor stores buy all this bullshit before they can get an allocated bottle or an allocated selection. Um, and then you have the actual stores, which I'm not going to fault all the stores. There are some, I've heard some great stories just this week of stores that are actually selling the Colonel Taylor marriage, uh, the 18 year marriage, uh, the barrel proof and some other great selections at retailer just above, which I think is fair. I can't stand the stores that buy that price of shit at over a thousand dollars because they say it's you know it's very very rare and they they you know just because you can't get it and you have to buy a lot of stuff in order to get that bottle doesn't mean you should rape everyone's wallets and bank accounts. That's all I'm saying. Um, all right, that's it. That's my soapbox for the night. Um, let's see. Buffalo Trace has to pay for that billion dollar expansion somehow. Yeah, but you know, it, it I'd be interested to know like how much Buffalo Trace gets from that. So if some asshole sets their price at a thousand dollars for a bottle of, you know, Eagle Rare 17, say some moron comes in there and buys it for a thousand. How much of that does Buffalo Trace get? That's what I want to know. Um, the distributor probably gets a cut of that. What does Buffalo Trace get of that? Um, so um, I would be curious to know that. Um, congrats on 25K from Adam Dorman. How does a guy in, was that, Montana go about getting a bottle of Old Carter Batch 5? Adam, I, w I wish I could tell you, man. Um, unfortunately, they're not in many states. If you know anyone in California, if you know anyone in Kentucky, if you know anyone in Washington, D.C., call them, have them hunt for you. I did speak to the Carters. Uh, actually, after I dropped the review, they reached out to me to say thank you. They are still working on getting their bottles on Sealbox, which is the you know famous hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. That and they sell. They have a single barrel and craft whiskey program, and they sell a lot of these bottles. They're trying to get their stuff on there so more people have access to it. So hopefully that comes soon. Um, let's see. Master Jim, what proportion do you recommend blending Larceny, OWA, and ECBP? I think, so Caitlin, I think the, uh, I'm trying to remember what the proportions were. Just try all even first. Just do, you know, just do like one ounce of each and see how it works. And then, uh, then work it out from there and see how it goes. Just try like one. I'm, I think there was more. I think Elijah Craig barrel proof was the most in that blend. So go like, go like, um, do like 40% Elijah Craig barrel proof. No, do like 60, 60 Elijah Craig barrel proof and then do 20 of Larceny and then 20 of the antique and see how that works. That's what I would, that's what I would say. Keegan says, I'm not in the business to make money. I'm here to build relationships. And that's why you have an awesome store, buddy. That's awesome. 
Buffalo Trey, uh, Buffalo Trace don't care. It's all about the fireball sale. <laughs> oh, Jason Coates has the recipe. There it is. 50% ECBP, 25% larceny 107. There you go. That's the recipe you need to follow. That's that's what won um, Blend Again at number one. All right, let's go to these blends, see what we got, guys. This one's got the maple syrup jacked up. Maple syrup, oak, chocolate. That's freaking amazing. There's something young in that blend. There's something youthful in that blend that I'm picking up. Don't know what it is, but there's... There's a and I and I like that balance. There's something that's I think there's some older whiskey and there's something youthful in there. Let's go to this one. Oh, we got another candy shop on the nose here, guys. This is sugar, vanilla sweetness, butter pecan, fuggy Yamada. <laughs> These are really different. There's some youthfulness in here. Maybe there could be even a Texas whiskey in here or just it's either Texas or something just youthful. Mash and drum, uh, Kentucky Owl Batch 9 or Cream of Kentucky 11 and a half. Uh, Kentucky Owl Batch 9 for sure. Kentucky Owl Batch 9 was a special uh, – that was a special batch. That was a good blend. God, this smells like vanilla. This is like when you walk in – to a damn, like a, I don't know, what is this, Stone Cold Creamery, Cold Stone, Stone Cold, like the wrestler, like, you know when you walk into that, like a really good ice cream place, and it just has like that waft of vanilla and sugar, that's what this smells like, whereas this one has a little bit more youth to it, I think there's a Texas whiskey in here, I'd be surprised if there's not, or at least something on the younger side, so... There's definitely something young in there or from Texas or maybe even from West Coast, too. I think my palate is 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 uh, it's sensitive tonight, so I'm picking up some really good flavors here. Let's try this one now. Holy crap. The nose matches the palate on this one. This one has like a cherry vanilla finish. Caramel. Man, that butterscotch note is just going on and on. Might be this one, guys. This one's very good, but it, there's a there's a bite to it. There's a youthfulness to it. Stone cold smells like cheap beer and man sweat. Tasty. <laughs> hey, what's up, Dramhounds in the house? How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in tonight. Dramhound, one of my mods. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with this one. Let's see what this is. Let me go to the list. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, I'm going to have to go with relatively neat. Relatively neat. Um, man. Anthony McKeever is relatively neat. That thing is delicious. Really good blend. Alec Garinger, his blend. There's got to be the there. I called it the Garrison. There's got to be something youthful or something Texas in there. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, let let's find out. So here's the Alec Garinger blend details.
Let's see if my palette was on point tonight, guys. Point seven five ounces Old Forester nineteen twenty. Point seven five ounces Iron Root Harbinger. What did I say, guys? Texas whiskey. Texas whiskey was in here. I'm telling you. And then we had point five ounces of Peerless. Peerless small batch rye. Really. That's a great blend, but the Iron Root took it over. The Iron Root really took it over. Holy shit. Nailed it. There was I definitely smelled some Texas whiskey in there. I definitely tasted some Texas whiskey in there. Very That You know what? I'm going to play around with that blend on my own. I think Alec Garinger. I think if you change the proportions a little bit, that blend could be really special. I'm going to actually say it. I'm going to put that aside. That's a that's a really interesting blend. Um, yeah. Alec Garinger, that's a that's an interesting blend. I'm going to put that one aside because I want to try that myself. Um, oh, that's the wise guy whiskey, guys. He's staying up here. Called it. Um, Alec Garinger said nailed it. Yeah, I, I, I totally taste the Texas whiskey in there, man. Alec Garinger, hmm. <laughs> hey, Mike M's in the house. Thanks to the show. Enjoyed some McKenna 10. Good stuff. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Mike. Um, John Rooney, how do we clean our palates in between drinks? Uh, water. John Rooney, when do we get to see a drumming video? You want to see drumming? Here. And go. There you go. This is a drumming video for you. <laughs> you ask and then you shall receive. There you go, buddy. Um, uh, Mr. Pumblechuck, Boss Hog Samurai Scientist, $500. Thoughts? Nope. Stay away. Save your money. Nope. No, no, no. Don't even do it. When you taste it, yeah, it's a solid whiskey, but it is not $500 good. Walk away. Save your money. Yeah, it was. It was the Texas Funk completely. Um, so Alec, uh, so the garrison um, goes down. Um, but, yeah, really interesting blend, Alec. I'm going to definitely – I'm going to play with that blend and see if uh if i can get it to really move on so that's really cool uh mike baker says 999 for the drum clip yes thank you so much mike <laughs> all right guys we have three matchups left left until we call the night let's try to get through these uh, a little bit quicker so we can end it about our 11 to our uh live stream here let's pick out that one and let's get this one here Here we go. All right. So question while I'm setting up this one. So uh, as you guys, I, as I mentioned, uh, we shot a video called the five whiskeys. You can, you know, if you only had five whiskeys, you only need five whiskeys the rest of your life. Uh, one of them is a, uh, one of them would have to be one that uh, is your everyday sipper. One is a one to impress your friends. One is a mixer. Uh, one is your Friday night pour. And one is uh, for special occasions. So everybody in the chat, I want you to pick your, if you had a bottle that you had that impresses your friends. Say you have people that come over, they're not really too much into whiskey or they know of whiskey. But when you, if you wanted to take out a bottle to impress them, what would that bottle be? So everyone in the chat, start putting in your uh, your answers as I set this up. 
Uh, Mike Epps says, go Lightning. Cheers, everybody. There we go, Mike. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait, Rocket Review. What did he say? Oh, I missed it. All right. Hey, man, did you touch my drum set? It's just weird because I feel like <laughs> that's so Step Brothers DC. I love it. One of my favorite movies ever. All right, so Clifford says Larceny, B520, OWA, and ECA120. Hot dog water in the nose. I might need to reevaluate my ratios. <laughs> but, I mean, remember, guys, the original blend was not Larceny barrel proof. It was regular Larceny, so you have to keep that in mind. All right, so coming in with this matchup, we have number one, which is Alejandro Lozano with fourth buck. He named it fourth buck. Going against the D, Jason Coates. So Jason Coates is very smart because he uh, named his blend the D because for some reason, all of us YouTubers always pick the letter D for our favorites. Uh, Alejandro Lozano, where is yours? It is right here. All right. Alejandro versus Jason Coates. Let's do this shit. A little bit there. All right, I'm going to get to your comments in a second, guys. Hold on one second. Let me set this up. So everybody's impress your friends poor. That's what I want to know. So we have one and we have eight. All right. Let's mix him up, and then I will check out the chat here. Let's see. Old Fitzgerald, Ball and Bond, 15, for impressed people, not in the, not into bourbon. Uh, Dramhound, yeah, I would I would agree. That's a really good choice, actually. That bottle is sexy. Buffalo Trace Single Bar, very approachable and tasty. Christopher Day says, everybody knows Pappy. Austin Scott, 101, straight from the barrel. Uh, JD Parker's ride WT 17. Okay. Glendronic 15. Good job. Old Forester 1920. Barrel proof. Yes. Yeah. The 1792 age 12 years. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Old Fitz or blend straight from the barrel. Brown Rig non whiskey drinkers, four rows of small match select. <laughs> Uh, Angels Envy Mizunura. Oh, shit. That would be a really good one. Um, I got to say, did anybody get that bourbon? Because I, I went back and forth for at least two hours of whether to get that bottle. I, I just can't. It's probably one of the worst values. Just anything from Angels Envy that's priced that high. I realize Mizunura casks are expensive. And I realized that that bottle, that decanter style they did was really expensive. But again, I'm not drinking the bottle and I'm not drinking the box it comes in. I'm drinking the whiskey. Is it worth that price point? I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Would have loved to do a review of it. But honestly, 90% of consumers aren't going to buy that bottle. So I just don't feel like it was worth it. Honestly. Jason Busey says, and my sex, oh, dark art 4.3 and my sexy body. All right. Silver locks is not worth it. Just too much to spend. Yeah, I could see that. All right, here we go. Very sweet on the nose, of course. This one is more caramel forward, probably the most caramel nose I've smelled tonight. Go to this one here. This one I'm getting more nuttiness. So I'm getting more of a peanut note on here. Maybe some Heaven Hill or Knob Creek in here or some kind of bean product, maybe. There's a pepperiness to this one. Whereas this one is more fruit and caramel. This one is more peanut and um, a little bit of chocolate too. 
Uh, Nick Foles, Master Drum, have you ever had Old Fitz Prime? If so, thoughts on it? Yeah, I have. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm actually a big fan of Old Fitz Prime. That's the gold label, right, you're talking about? Yeah, I have one over there on the bottom of my shelf. Um, yeah, I, I think it's actually a great, you know, sipper. Unfortunately, it's not available everywhere, but I actually really like this stuff. I think it's pretty damn good for the price. All right, let's go for a sip. Master and Drum, American version, everyday McKenna 10, Mixer Sazerac, to impress Balcones Frook. Friday night, Old Forester 1920, special occasion, Leon Leroux Weller. I see you guys, uh, you guys are selecting some of the ones that I might have selected for my video. You're going to have to wait and see. Let's go to this one now. Oh, yeah. Again, two very good blends. This one has better balance and better finish. I'm going to have to select this one here. One more sip on this one, though. There's something interesting on this one that I'm trying to pinpoint. Hmm. Yeah, like right at the back end of that one, it just kind of falls flat, though, unfortunately. But the front and mid pal on this one is really great. It's very fruity, very sugary sweet. Getting a nice little smoke in it on there, but this one. This one has just has more of a balance, more of a of a finish on it. I feel like there's some either Heaven Hill or Beam in there. There's a nuttiness to it. I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, so that means the D. Jason Coates is moving on. <laughs> Alejandro Lozano, very very good front of the palate. Uh, it's really the finish that kind of killed you. So Alejandro Lozano, um, really, really great blend. Let's see what's in this one. I'm curious. I have his blend details right here. Oops. Oh shit. He really taped this. Where is it? Okay. Stag junior batch 13, which explains the sweetness. Weller 12 year called fourth buck since it's a four grain. There you go. That tasted like Buffalo Trace, honestly. It was very sweet. Um, I said it was the most caramel forward one that I've tried tonight. That's because of that Weller 12. But I think the, 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 the finish on it is what kind of just lost it for me. So the fourth buck recipe, in case anyone wants to try it at home, Stag Junior Batch 13 and Weller 12, 50-50. I wonder how that would work with Stag Junior Batch 12 and Weller 12 rather than the 13 and the 12. Just saying. The 13 was a really good uh, batch, though. So, all right, Alejandro Lozano. Good blend, man. I appreciate that one a lot. Definitely, uh, definitely worked that one out. That was that one. And now we have... Um, what I pick? Where's the D? Here's the D. She'll be moving on. Congrats, Jason Coates. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So we got that one. All right. All right, guys. We have two more matchups tonight. Holy shit. I'm actually still feeling pretty good. I'm tasting things. I'm not, you know, I am switching to new glasses right now, though. So the last two blends get the fancy glasses. Let's see what we get. Jason Coates, congrats. He says it works. 
His theory on making the name the D. Yeah, it works. Okay, here we go. There we go, guys. We only have four blends left. Four blends left. This one is number 14, the Maltese Falcon. One of my favorite names, Matt Secchi. Uh, where is that one? Here it is. The Maltese Falcon is going to be going against 11, which is Andy Gray. Andy Gray. I named this one Gray Area. <laughs> Andy Gray's is right here. Perfect. All right, guys. Let's get these poured. So we have Andy Gray, who sends these really cool bottles, which is awesome. And then the Maltese Falcon. Here we go. Which is not a lot in there. I got to save that one in case it wins here. So, all right, perfect. Um, all right, so let's label these. We have 11 and 14. Pinkies up, fancy glasses. All right, here we go. Let's mix these up. Andy Gray says, finally, anticipation has been killing me. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like cool that the guys that, you know, everybody out there that actually creates a blend, you guys have as much like anxiety and excitement as I do, you know, when trying to go through these, you know, it's pretty cool. I, I know you guys work hard on these, so Jason doing the rest tonight. Hell yeah. Yep. I'm going through them all tonight and then we're going to go on to the final. So what I'm going to do next week, guys, for the finals is I'm going to do two flights. So we're going to split the – we're going to split all the bourbons into flights. Um, we're going to select them. Uh, everybody that's in the finals is going to get new numbers. We're going to select them. They're going to go into a flight. I'm going to select the top two from each flight. Um, so there will be a flight of four and a flight of five because it's uneven. The top two in each flight will go to the finals. And then I'll do those four in a blind. Um, and then the thing, though, is that nobody's going to know what's, what, what class. I'm not going to tell anyone what's in each class. I'm going to label them, give them each a number. Uh, I'm going to you know do everything I can so I don't remember what's in each class. And then at the end of the night, we'll find out who the winner is of Blend to Get In. Um, I will lift up the glass. I will see what number for me got number one. And then we will announce the winner uh, next week. And the winner, for those of you that did not see it, is going to win uh, this shelf, um, which is uh, – this is the – it's a it's a custom-made barrel head shelf uh, where you can put some bottles, and there's also some slots to hang your Glen Cairns from it as well. Uh, I'm going to see if I could put Blend Again and Champion on the front of the barrel head for you guys, for whoever the winner is going to be. Uh, and you will also win a uh, Blend Again and Champion t-shirt. So good luck to the winners, guys. Good luck to the blenders out there. We have some really cool prizes this year. want to say thanks to Matt Mako Seki. says, Maltese Falcon, thanks for the opportunity, man. I think if nothing else, folks will like to try it themselves at home. Okay, so we'll see how that goes. Hey, Whiskey Mysteries in the house. We got Phil. What's up, Phil? Nice to see you. If anyone has not checked out Whiskey Mystery yet, amazing content and also amazing blind tastings he does. Uh, Phil and Deepa, love you guys. We got to collaborate at some time, Whiskey Mystery. Let me know if you ever want to collaborate to some something cool with you know, some kind of scotch collaboration. I would love to do it. I just did um, Aquavite's Blind Challenge, and I think it, you know, I'm not going to say too much, but I think uh, we could we could do something collaborative, so that'd be awesome. So, all right, here we go. Mix these up again. All right, here we go, guys. I'm just gonna compare the noses real quick here. Completely different. These are both packing some proof. 
This is fruit and this is sweet. This is more caramel, nuttiness. There's a funk on here too. There's either something young or something from Texas in this one, I think. I'm just saying. Wise guy with CGI says, hell yeah, he's ready. Okay. Uh, hey, we got a new viewer here, Brett Broskowski. He says, new to bourbon, love your content, man. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate that, Brett. Thanks for coming in. Everybody welcome in, Brett. Cheers, buddy. Whiskey Mystery says, yes, uh, yes to collaboration. All right. I'll have to, uh, I'll email you guys and see what we can figure out. Yeah, there's something funky in this one. Whether it be an American single malt or a Texas whiskey, that one's got something to it. We'll taste it. Let's go here first. Solid blend, getting a lot of rye spice on the back end. So maybe there's some rye in there or a high rye mash bill. Maybe it's just the proof. Cheers, Jason. Go get your uh, your chicken tenders. <laughs> Godspeed, buddy. All right, let's go to this one here. Oh. That's nice. Very nice. I like you. I think there's something Texas in there, but... Whatever the blend is, it's complementing each other well. It's really nice. Let's go here again. Good solid, uh, good solid blend. It's light. Good finish. Not overly complex. The color difference on these two are incredible. This one's way darker, which makes me think there's some, uh, some Texas whiskey in here. Ooh, this thing is bringing all the flavor, chocolate, raspberry, rich vanilla, black pepper, a little bit of hints of a maple syrup note on the very back end. This one is good, but this one is, that's pretty stellar. This one's a pretty easy choice here. I'm going to go with this one, who is... Andy Gray. Andy Gray with Gray Area comes through with this blend. That's absolutely, that's really, really good. If he has a Texas whiskey in there, whatever he complimented it with just works. Um, the Maltese Falcon. As good and sweet as it is, there's just not enough going on in the finish for me, unfortunately. Um, let's find out what's in the Maltese Falcon. Uh, let's see. This is, are you serious? 40 milliliters Saffle, 15 milliliters Wild Turkey, 17 bottled and bond. What? Yeah, I don't know what it is. You know what? When you when you say turkey, it does taste like turkey, but I don't know. There's something missing from it. You would think Saffle and the Turkey 17 would go really well together, but I mean, it does. You, now that I know that there's some 17 turkey in there, you can definitely smell the age. Yeah, I just think Andy just found some magical blend of some kind of Texas whiskey to put in with all this. Holy shit. 
Hey, what's up, Bourbon Apprentice? Yeah. That's surprising. The Saffle and the and the so you had 40 milliliters Saffle and 15 milliliters Wild Turkey 17. I wonder if you switch those proportions if it would uh, work out differently. I gotta try that blend though. Maltese Falcon. From Matt Secchi. Okay. I see you, Matt. That was a good blend, man. But there was just something wasn't translating to me as turkey. I got to try that on my own. That's a pretty, that's an interesting blend. You have my mind peaked with that, Matt. But I got to say whatever, whatever Andy blended here was just absolutely incredible. So Andy makes it. Um, right here. Congrats to Andy Gray. Good job, buddy. He said he made it. He finally made it past the uh, the first round. So there you go. So that brings us to our last two guys. Last two blends of the night. And perfect timing. Number two, which is Bourbon Dreams. By James E., James Edwards, and Insomnia by Michael Garcia. All right, guys, you guys are the last two. Here we go. We have two and we have 20. Here's Insomnia, uh, which is 20 here. So let's go for that one. Yeah, that's plenty there. Uh, and then James E. with his blend, uh, he named it Bourbon Dreams. So I would I would expect a primarily a bourbon heavy blend here. Okay, as with most of these. All right, pretty even. Good luck, guys. Mike Garcia and James E. Congrats and uh, good luck on the blending, guys. Here we go. All right, let me do this here. We have two just right here. And then we have 20, which is right here. Okay. All right, let's mix these up. Last buns of the night, guys. Time for water. Yeah, I definitely need some water. Pilco, the secret to my blend is Malort. <laughs> John Rooney, does Texas whiskey need to be blended? It's a good question. I think Texas whiskey, though, if you blend it, if you choose to use Texas whiskey in your blend, so I've tasted two blends tonight. One I called saying there was some Texas whiskey in it, and then I just tried... Um, Eric, uh, Eric McDaniels, which I, I'm sorry, Andy Gray, which I think there was some, I think there was something Texas or something younger in there. Um, so if you're going to choose to use Texas whiskey or even something out of Washington or California, or even Colorado, it's going to make a big impact on your blend. The trick is, and the challenge is to create a blend using those flavor profiles that complement each other. So, all right, let's go here. Let's go to the number one here. Let's go. Ooh. Chris Riley says, Fuggy Yamada. Yeah, we still have 208 people in the chat watching. This is amazing, guys. Thank you for hanging in. We're almost done. Just going to find out who's going to get to the finals before our flights uh, next week for the finals. Let's try this one. Well, let me go to the nose first here. First. So this is an okay nose. Caramels, vanillas, pretty, you know, pretty... Um, Standard uh, notes I'm getting on here. I think the one standout is a dusty corn note I'm getting on that one. Let's go for a sip. Mm. 
Oh, the palate's way better than the nose on that one. That is very, very tropical and peachy and apricot. And what the hell is in that blend? That's really good. <laughs> All right, let's try this one here. Yes, everyone hit the like button, please. That'd be great. This one is a more nutty characteristic here. You know what? I'm going to show you guys another quick uh, drum clip just to say thank you. Um, here we go. And let's try this one. And roll baby well this one's really nice on the nose thank you for all the super chats tonight guys and support again twenty five thousand subs i'm fucking amazed about that did not think i would my channel would ever get to that point honestly i thought my channel would be too nerdy for most people because <laughs> i get into the history a lot and you know how you make it and um like i said i can't say enough for the support guys so thank you so much Let's try this one. Oh. This one is some of those grape notes that I was getting in one of those other blends. The grape, the the cherry. This one was like grape and cherry all day. Ooh. That's nice. Let's go back and forth here. Adam Dorman says, wife says, hit the like button on the drummer video. <laughs> Thank you so much. This one, it's good, but it's very, it's, it's, it's like, it's very sweet. It's very light though. I would like equate it to like a Weller Special Reserve, whereas this one is coming through with way more flavor, way more punch. This is kind of an easy choice here. Um, let's see. This one I really like a lot. This is, um, hmm. The winner of this matchup and the final match of the night goes to James E. and Bourbon Dreams. Congrats, buddy. That is a delicious blend. The grape, the cherry on the back end, the spice. Damn. This one kind of killed this blend, I hate to say. This blend was good. It was solid, but it was just very, it was very light when, you know, push came to shove. Whereas this one was just an amazing, this one just was like, the spice and the fruit characteristics combined together just made it an incredible blend. James E., congratulations. You're going to the finals as well. So we got we have our lineup, guys. We have our finals going next week. It's going to be James E., Andy Gray, Jeff Perkins, Jason Coates, Wise Guy Whiskey Guy, Mike Cook, ADHD Whiskey, Richie Z, John Gresham, and Ben Compton going head-to-head -head for an amazing, amazing final. Uh, I cannot wait to see who's going to win. It's going to be an incredible tasting. It's going to be blind. It's going to be amazing. Thank you guys so much for uh, for tuning in tonight. Holy – oh, crap. We got Rare Bird 101s in the house. Um, before we sign off, guys, I had one last question real quick uh, in the chat before we sign off. Uh, and I wanted to, 
I was kind of going through some of the bottles that I had sitting on the shelf um, and wondering, you know, when I was doing that top five video. So we had said um, that, you know, I asked you what you had to impress your fr to, uh, to impress your friends. But what I really wanted to know is what was your everyday sipper? Um, I have my very straightforward everyday sipper. I wanted to know what yours was. So last question of the night before we sign off, we'll go to the chat um, and uh, and then we'll say goodnight. So I'm going to kind of clean this all up and then see what we get here. Congrats to all the winners. Uh, Jason talks about us whiskey nerds and Dave shows up. <laughs> That's true. We're, Dave, I was just talking about whiskey nerds and um, – I had 25,000 subscribers tonight uh, that I just hit today, so I want to say thanks, and I never thought my channel would get that far because of my whiskey nerdiness. And then another whiskey nerd comes in the chat, Rarebird101, thanks so much. James E., congratulations, buddy. That was awesome. Um, Chris Rowley says, the Fuggy Amada blend, hopefully somebody will do that next year. Uh, Knob Creek is my go-to. We have Old Forester 1920, Eagle Rare, Rare Breed. Uh, Mike M says his new sipper is Rare Breed. That's awesome. Wild Turkey 101, E.H. Taylor Small Batch. If you could have that as an everyday sipper, that's pretty cool because that's not hard. That's kind of hard to find. Andrew Kelly, what was the blend composition? Oh, for the last one. Um uh, blah, that's that one. Oh yeah, that's right. So the last one was a bunch of stuff. I think. Let me go in my email, and then we'll sign off with this. So, so the blend for the insomnia was so that's a bottled and bond blend. So that is Evan Williams bottled and bond, um, Old Forester bottled and bond. Uh, Jim Beam bonded. Uh, Heaven Hill bottled and bond. Uh, what else is on there? Let's see here. Um, wait, where the hell did the email go? Okay. Uh, Henry McKenna bottled and bond. And. I'm trying to look through the uh, the email here, guys. Oh, and that's it. So that was just a pure – oh, and uh, Colonel Taylor bottle on small batch. Speaking of small batch. So that was uh, – so the Insomnia blend was an all bottled and bond blend, and that was it. Um, James E., we'll find out what his blend was if he makes it to the – if he wins. But we'll find out what all the, the final round blends was uh, or, or is next week going to be an epic uh, blind tasting next week, guys. We're going to have two rounds with two different flights, and the top two from each of those flights are going to make it to the final flight, and then from there, we will crown a winner. So um, what can I say? Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. This was an amazing blind tasting, great head-to-heads, amazing blends. I think we're going to have a real hard time picking out who the winner is next uh, next week. But we're going to finish this off next week until we get into our next round of, um, of live streams and interviews. Uh, keep an eye out for Friday for my uh, five whiskeys to, you know, the, what I mean, what do you kind of call it? The, uh, I guess the five whiskeys that you could never, the only five whiskeys you ever need type video. So that will be coming up soon. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out tonight. Thank you so much for the support, the super chats. 25 fucking K. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you soon on the Mash and Drum. Good night, guys. Cheers. And I'll uh I'll see you next week on the Mash and Drum right here for Blend Again, the finals. We're gonna crown a champion. Cheers. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care, everybody.